A very common question I get is, is it possible to become a mediator without a law degree? And I get why people ask this question. The reality is getting a law degree is extremely expensive and expensive in all sorts of ways, right? It's three years of your life. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars, typically of debt. And the reality is that most of law school has nothing to do with the practice of mediation. So here is some good news. You can absolutely become a mediator without a law degree. And in fact, I would say some of the very best mediators I know have never gone to law school. Today, I'm gonna to share with you six tips that will help you on your path to become a mediator. So the first one is really asking yourself what kind of mediator you want to be. Broadly speaking, I would say there are two types, what I would call a court-connected mediator, and then someone who just generally mediates conflicts in the world. So what is a court-connected mediator? A court-connected mediation is one that comes to mediation because a lawsuit has somehow been filed in court. So if you think about asbestos litigation, or if you think about the Microsoft antitrust case, those kinds of mediations happen because there is a case in federal court where someone is actually litigating and rather than litigate, it goes to mediation. And for some people, when they think about mediation, that's what comes to their mind. But in fact, there are all sorts of other mediations that are truly much more typical. So for example, let's imagine a parent passes away and there are siblings who are in a dispute over how to divide the family property. In a situation like this, the matter is not before a judge, but there's still a need for a mediation. Or imagine another example. There's conflict within a department in a workplace, and someone who works in an ombuds office comes in and tries to mediate that conflict. As you think about what kind of mediator you want to be, it's important to know whether you want to mediate cases that are connected in court or be a general mediator in the world. And, and the reason why leads to the second important point. If you want to be a court-connected mediator, many states have some kind of educational requirement. So for example, in my home state of Massachusetts, you have to take a 32-hour mediation course in order to be qualified to be a mediator in a court-connected arena. Beyond that though, usually there are no actual regulations or professional requirements to become a mediator. So that's the good news. A law degree simply isn't required. But here's my advice, and it leads to the third important point. Whether or not there's a regulation that requires it, I would urge you to get some training. Training and mediation can be done in person or online. Almost every local jurisdiction has some company or organization that offers high quality mediation training. You could typically find a reputable mediation training firm by just doing a, a simple Google search. So let me share with you why I think it's valuable to get some training. Um, first, you will actually learn the basic principles of mediation. Secondly, the training will give you some needed practice and some feedback. Third, by dint of the training, you'll have some increased confidence the first time you get a case. And this leads to the fourth point, because one of the real challenges that many people who get mediation training report is, okay, like I'm trained, but how do I get some cases? There are all sorts of ways to get some practice. One way to get some practice is many small claims courts actually offer mediation as an option, and they're often looking for volunteers who will mediate in the small claims court. But there are also other opportunities to get some mediation practice. So for example, many times assisted living facilities have many conflicts amongst the residents and are looking for some outside mediation. In addition, Often condo associations find themselves in need of mediation. There can also be local community disputes where folks are looking for an outside mediator. Sometimes within a school district, there might be a peer mediation center that needs some help with mediation. My coaching and advice here is the more ways you can get some practice, the easier it's gonna be for you to ultimately generate some business for yourself. Speaking of business, so fifth, one of the best ways 
to start to get some business and build a reputation is to connect with local or national mediation associations. For example, there are regional chapters of the Association of Conflict Resolution. Also, the American Bar Association has a section of dispute resolution. It's worth saying that you do not need to be a lawyer to join the ABA section of dispute resolution. In addition, many universities have very strong mediation or dispute resolution programs. Connecting with these various national and local associations and universities is helpful in a number of different ways. First, it gets your name out there. Secondly, you start to meet other people with shared interests. And thirdly, you start to build relationships and network. And that is one of the best ways to actually start your practice. This leads to my sixth piece of advice. And it really is advice for any career ambition that anyone has, which is be persistent. Unlike certain professions that have a very clear career trajectory, mediation is not one of them. The way most of us get our careers is by dint of persistence and by being willing to say yes to any chance we have to observe a mediation or to participate in one. So let me give you two examples. First, my own experience. I knew about halfway through law school that I didn't want to practice law full time. And I knew that carving out a mediation career was going to be really challenging. So after I graduated from law school, I was clerking for a federal judge in Boston. And the federal district court in Boston had a mediation program. And so I asked my judge if he would let me sit in on mediations that occurred in the court. Now, one of the rules of being a law clerk is that you are seen and not heard. So I was not able to actually get any practice during this time, but I did get to sit in and observe dozens of mediations. And that was incredibly helpful to me to learn how to navigate mediation space. I'll give you a second example. Right now, I have a friend who is in his late 50s. He has spent the bulk of his career as a corporate executive. But a few years ago, he decided he wanted to pivot and become a mediator. And so what he has done is availed himself of every single opportunity to sit in any mediation training, negotiation training, mediation, or consensus building process. All of this is to actually say the following. If you want to make it as a mediator, a law degree is simply not necessary. What you need to do is get the training you need, look for any opportunity you have to get some practice, to network with local and national organizations so that you start to meet the people who do this kind of work, and then be persistent. When I look at the people who I went to law school with, truth of the matter is, that there's only one or two of them who actually became a mediator. And if I think about the cohort of people with whom I went to graduate school beyond the law school environment, I want to share with you the best mediator is actually somebody who went to divinity school and not law school. But while they were in divinity school, they followed the six steps I suggested. First, they decided what kind of a mediator they wanted to be. Did they want to mediate disputes more broadly or be connected with courts specifically? Second, they made sure that they complied with local state requirements. Third, they got extensive training in mediation. Fourth, they spent a predominant amount of their time in divinity school finding ways to practice, doing small claims mediation, volunteering, observing whenever they could. Fifth, upon graduating, they connected with the ABA Session of Dispute Resolution and with local universities that had strong mediation programs. And lastly, they were persistent. They took every opportunity they could to practice, get experience, and get feedback. If you want to continue learning about mediation, watch this next video, which is what are the steps in the mediation process. Also, I'd be incredibly grateful if you would click the like button, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And so that you don't miss new videos, please be sure to ring the bell to get notifications. Okay, keep on watching. You want to learn how to mediate.